as a constitutional law attorney, former senior legal advisor and personal counsel to President Donald J. Trump. Jenna Ellis believes in the rule of law and the importance of integrity in our elections. And she's ready to tackle the big cultural and legal issues facing America. This is The Jenna Ellis Show. Here is your host, Jenna Ellis. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Jenna Ellis Show. I'm Jenna Ellis. And of course, we always have to be concerned about preserving and protecting our constitutional rights and making sure that the government doesn't infringe. Well, most often, Americans will look at the federal level as protecting our rights through Congress. But we have these 50 states that are laboratories of democracy. And some laboratories not doing so well after about 250 years. One of those is my now former home state of Colorado that just passed four separate bills that are restricting gun rights. And two of them already, the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association is suing. The other two, they're gonna have to wait until there's actually harm occurred, which probably won't take that much time. But these bills are absolutely ridiculous that the state of Colorado thinks that they can impose on gun owners, gun manufacturers, and citizens of the state of Colorado. So joining me next, is going to be the executive director of Rocky Mountain Gun Owners, Taylor Rhodes, and he's going to explain in detail exactly what these provisions are, what you can do about it, and about the lawsuits. Because even if you don't live in Colorado, you need to make sure that your legislature never, ever, ever goes this far. With inflation, the banking world collapse, and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer, to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide, and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association of Colorado and their executive director, my good friend Taylor Rhodes, joins me now to talk about this. Um, so Taylor, first of all, um, for those who aren't familiar with uh, these four major gun control bills, um, walk us through what what this is actually doing to gun owners in Colorado and why um, this is so dangerous. Right. So just, uh, just last week, Governor Polis signed these bills, as you mentioned. One of the things I want to point out before we go further, two of the bills we, we had immediate standing on. So we knew that we wanted to sue from the very beginning. That's the promise we made to our members here. And I don't even think the ink was dry on the paper uh, before we had law- lawsuits filed. So we filed awesome. pretty much immediately against uh, against waiting periods. And now the interesting thing about the waiting period bill here in Colorado is in California, they have a 10-day waiting period. Uh, There's a handful of other states that have waiting periods as well. In Colorado, it's uniquely terrible uh, because it is a minimum of a three-day waiting period. Now, we've seen the ATF on the federal side of things just come up with new rules out of thin air. And essentially, they've given, the legislature has given CBI, our background check authority here in Colorado, that same 
uh, authority to say, okay, it's a minimum of three days. So it could be a five day, six day, 10 day, 21 day, 36 day, you know, you name it, whatever arbitrary number that they come up with. So we sued on that immediately. In addition, we've sued on the minimum age requirements to purchase a firearm. They, uh, and federal law says that you have to be 21 to purchase a handgun, which frankly probably isn't consistent with text history and tradition of, our, of, our, of the Second Amendment. However, uh, and for many states, it's been, uh, it's been 18 to purchase long guns, such as hunting rifles, shotguns, uh, things of that nature. Uh, we sued over that. That's already been overturned by several federal judges uh, around the country. We we think both of these, frankly, are fairly slam dunk lawsuits uh, that we're that we're working on. Now, there's two others that well, they passed, should be, and these are yeah, they should be, they should be. Um, so there's two others that we didn't sue on immediately, and frankly, it's because we don't have standing just yet. We need someone to be negatively affected, unfortunately. So the first one I'll talk about is is what they call gun violence victim ass act access to uh, the judicial system. Really what this is, is this is the ability to sue gun manufacturers and gun stores. So let me give you this example of how heinous this bill is. If, if you go out and purchase a roll pen, this is the smallest portion of an AR-15. That roll pen ends up in an AR that happens in a gun crime. The victim of that gun crime could not only sue the seller of that roll pin, but the manufacturer of that roll pin, if it could be traced back to that AR. In addition, if I went to Walmart, I duct taped a flashlight to the end of uh, AR, let's just call it, because that's what most people think of when they think of gun crime. So let's just put, let's call it an AR. You duct tape it to the end. Not only could the victim sell or sue the the all the AR components, they could sell sue the uh, manufacturer of the duct tape, the flashlight, the battery in the flashlight, the light bulb in the flashlight, all of the above. And probably the worst part of this bill is if, you know, let's say you or, you or I are the victim of a gun crime here in Colorado. We're probably not going to sue, right? We're, we're good, honest, you know, gun-loving gun Americans. The state attorney general could step in and sue on our behalf without our consent. Um, so it just takes that so, a step further, because ultimately, when you when I'm talking through these bills, you'll see a, a pattern that here in Colorado they they don't want guns. They want guns completely eradicated, and and we've seen that with bills such as the assault weapons ban that we were luckily able to kill uh, because such a high outcrying of support. Uh, in opposition of that. Now, the last bill is, you know, we've seen this wave of, of red flag gun confiscation going around the country, um, frankly, since Republicans uh, were endorsing it. Republicans in the NRA started endorsing this back in 2018. And um, it, it's been a, a horrible thing for gun owners. And not only now, you know, can ex-disgruntled spouses uh, red flag you, but now uh, your your primary care physician, an ER nurse. Um, you could go in for a uh, mental health therapy. That mental health therapist uh, could red flag you, which we're hearing tons of, of opposition from this from like military members because now they're having to choose whether to get their PTSD treated or whether they're going to be able to keep their gun rights. But most, uh, most egregious is now your child's teacher can red flag you. Uh, so if you, you know, get upset in a, in a parent-teacher meeting uh, or you're speaking out in front of the school board, I mean, we saw what happened in Virginia when when school board, when school parents that were showing up to school board meetings were labeled as terrorists. I mean, these are some of the first people that are going to be red flagged. Um, and we know that these things are, uh, are, are often used not to just take the guns out of mentally unstable people, people's hands, but these are used as malicious uh, weapons. Uh, to, to, to harm gun owners. Wow. Well, Taylor Rhodes, um, I really appreciate that whole overview. And I think for um, for most of us who are listening to this, this went even further than uh, what we were aware of. And, um, and I have a lot of questions. So, you know, so first, um, yeah. you know, going back to the um, the initial uh, bill that you're already suing on, which is this three day waiting period. 
Um, that too, a lot of people was just was just the three days. But what you're saying is that it doesn't have at all an upper cap or an upper threshold. I mean, this could be something where someone is just indefinitely um, not able to buy a gun because of a waiting period. That's correct. So, and and they they made mention of like back during COVID. So if if you're a Colorado and you ever tried to buy a gun during uh, during 2020 2021. I mean, they were wait, there were waiting periods. I had a gun that was on a waiting period for 21 days, and this wasn't we didn't even have uh, you know a waiting period installed. They just didn't have enough agents to run the background checks. Uh, so you know something you know small that you know three or four people call out sick, or you know the the they decide that you know they're not going to open their background check system for you know a couple days. In theory, they could delay you as long as they wanted to uh, with with no repercussions. Wow. And that absolutely needs to um, be overturned. And I'm grateful that you're challenging that as well as um, the age restriction. And um, for those who, uh, and probably most of our AFR uh, family is familiar with the concept of standing just because of uh, the 2020 election and this whole idea that you have to have um, a, a harm incurred as part of um, the initial threshold question as to whether uh, you can sue. So when we're talking about you know these other two bills um, that include the um, you know, suing of, of manufacturers and um, any of these parts, and then um, you know also this red flag law, obviously someone would have to incur that harm, and you'd have to go through the elements of standing. But as you were describing, Taylor, this um, you know this this third bill that was. Um, the modifications to a firearm that then if that's used in a commission of a crime, you could, I mean, you could bootstrap it. It's reminding me of all of these memes where people were saying, oh, here's all of the modifications. And it was literally super ridiculous stuff. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, right. okay, I could, I could put a, you know, could duct tape a stuffed animal onto an AR and then somehow, right. you know, sue Mattel or sue this company because that, that, and that certainly wasn't intended to be part of a firearm, like a flashlight wouldn't or duct tape or some of these things. I mean, this is just beyond absurd. And it appears very obviously that Colorado is just trying on purpose to in any way, shape or form, have everyone so fearful of the lawfare that they're just going to say, okay, we we don't want to deal with guns in the state, period. Right. And that's exactly what they're doing. And I mean, you, I am, I'm not just a gun lobbyist. I'm a gun guy. I, I'm at the range all the time, probably more than I should be. Uh, but when we're hearing from, from gun dealers that they're like, you know, it's, it's actually going to negatively affect what the Democrats are trying to do because many of them are saying, well, you know, yeah, of course I'm going to have to, you know, process the 4473 that's the background check when i uh do the do the firearm purchase but everything else we're going to sell in cash uh because we don't want it traced back to our store and you know that's doing exactly the opposite and this is again big government failing um to to to, you know make good on the promises that they're that they're giving us i mean one of the things that i've been pointing out over the last 10 years you know the democrats have really sold us a bill of goods they passed, I think it's like now it's 27 anti-gun laws, you know, as small as, you know, changing, you know, one statute from a misdemeanor to a felony where they, you know, an individual couldn't purchase a gun uh, to, uh, you know, red flag gun confiscation or, you know, three-day waiting periods. It's, it, it ranges, right? So they've sold us this bill of goods that, you know, all of these laws are going to protect us. It's going to stop crime. It's going to reduce suicide. Well, in reality, that's not the case. Crime rates have gone through the roof here in Colorado. Colorado is one of the most dangerous states to live in today. Suicide rates have gone through the roof. Uh, we're, we're not addressing the things that actually need to be addressed here in Colorado. You know, for some of the things that we could actually do to make, you know, uh, make changes in, in, in the way that our our society is looking at not only guns, but just, you know, value of human life. I mean, one of the things that's almost always consistent in, in let's let's just call it the common shooter, right? The, the mentally disturbed shooter that goes and causes a catastrophic harm. 
almost always comes from a fatherless, broken home. We have to have fathers back in the home. And this is this is attributed to the welfare society. People are incentivized uh, to not not have a have a um, complete home. The second thing is we have kids that are completely overly medicated most of the time on you know some kind of stabilizing drug whether that be an antidepressant whether that be you know a uh, ADHD medication um, something of that form and they're and they're started at a very young age we've got to get our kids off these meds uh, and the third is is removing gun-free zones gun-free zones uh, dr. John Watt thinks that about 96 percent of mass shootings happen happen in gun-free zones. I've done some research additionally. I think it's actually a little bit lower. It's closer to 92, uh, but we're still over 90% of um, of mass shootings are happening in so-called gun-free zones because criminals know that they can go into these places that are gun-free zones, such as churches, malls, movie theaters, uh, and not not face any type of retaliation and any type of resistance. Um, and so we're, we're seeing that uh, these negative policies, big government overreach is not helping us at all. It's actually harming us in every single way. Yeah, and that that's such an excellent point, Taylor Rhodes, um, the executive director for the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association in Colorado, that this all comes back to a comprehensive worldview. And the Democrats like to focus just on these top level issues of saying, well, you know, we're going to go after the guns because that's the problem. And they like to say that these new laws are intended to decrease, you know, suicide rate and, and youth violence, stop mass shootings, um, all of these things. But we're not seeing that actual effect. In fact, we're seeing the opposite of that because they're missing the biblical worldview element. They're missing the fact that you can't just uh, force compliance with a moral and upright society. You actually have to teach children the truth. You have to teach the respect for life in communities. You have to have the church that is functioning properly in society. You have to have fathers that are in the home. You have to have families that are valued and, and incentives from the government to encourage families. Um, and this is why we historically have had marriages in society where there are tax breaks and other things to incentivize uh, for families to stay together. And of course, that's been weaponized because now we've abdicated that from um, from the church to arbitrate marital disputes and given that over to the state. And it's all totally backward. So we have to think we have to get back to the biblical worldview and making sure we are always teaching truth in society. And that's politics. We'll be right back more with more on Jenna Ellis in the morning. With inflation, the banking world collapse, and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer, to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. Have you ever picked up a towel set because it felt so soft in the store, but then when you leave and you go to use it, it's not really that absorbent? 
It's basically a towel that is leaving you out to dry. That's why MyPillow has developed the MyPillow towels, towels that actually work. I know, it's totally mind-blowing. Towels that actually dry you. Their six-piece towel set includes two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. They come in a variety of colors, I have the sage green and the white. I love them. And right now you can receive a six piece set for only $39.98 with promo code Jenna. That's J E N N A. So go to mypello.com right now and click on the radio listener special. MyPello products come with a 10 year warranty and have a 60 day money back guarantee. So to receive this amazing offer on the six piece towel set of MyPello towels, just go to mypello.com, click on the radio listener special and enter promo code Jenna, that's J-E-N-N-A, or call 1-800-564-8475. That's mypillow.com, promo code Jenna.